they came out Christ. And the prophet came and said, Ezekiah, you will die. But Ezekiah said, preventable tragedy. This one, we will prevent this one. I'm telling you this morning, all these tragedies that people are going through, and they say it's final, that we can do nothing. This time, we are going to change every negative thing. Tragedies are preventable. Don't you ever see that it's forever set your predestination. You're going to make a choice, and your choice will make your life better in Jesus' name. That's the reason I come to you today, wanting to look at the word of God and wanting you to understand that there is no tragedy that is so fixed, no tragedy that is so permanent. No tragedy that is so preordained or predestined that you cannot change. Everything negative will change in your life in Jesus' name. And so Ezekiah began to pray. Ezekiah said, Lord, how will this happen? You tell me to set my house in order and I'm going to die. I'm not ready. I still have a lot of things to do. And then God said, Isaiah, go back to that man. He's not ready to die yet. He's seen. I'm going to spend eternity in heaven when I get there. But what's the hurry? What's the hurry? I'm not going now. And the Lord said, I give you how many years more? Tell me out loud. 50 years more. That man knew that you could change all those preventable tragedies. Divine antidote. What's the antidote? What's the solution? How do you change something negative? A preventable tragedy. Number one, by faith. Let's look at it now. In Ephesians chapter 6, I'm reading to you from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the furry darts of the wicked. Did you ever tell yourself? Did you ever say? That all those uh, kind of maneuvering and mot motivation of the enemy, all the things that the devil will do to monitor your life and then to maneuver and then to be able to do something that is wrong and destroy you, that, well, what can I do? What can I do? He is Satan. He has made up his mind. He's going to destroy me. All the furry ducks of the wicked were going to destroy by faith in Jesus' name. Hebrews, I'm reading from chapter 6, verse 12. Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 12. Preventable tragedies. All the tragedies of life that you have, maybe you have been living with and saying, I accept, well, what can I do? You will do something about them today. In Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 12, that she be not slothful. The followers of them who through faith and patience inherit promises. There's faith and then there is patience. Through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. We're looking at Job. Looking at Job. Job chapter 22. Job chapter 22. Here we're looking at verse 27 and verse 28. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee. I thought you would say amen. You know, by prayer, you can change all those preventable tragedies. You make your prayer unto the Lord, and the Lord will hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Look at verse 28. Thou shalt also, tell me, decree a thing. When you see a tragedy, when you see something evil, and it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and then you just stay there, and then you open your chest and say, Come, why do you do that? Why don't you say, I reject that? That will not be. This tragedy will not be mine. Death will not be mine. Destruction will not be mine. Calamity will not be mine. I decree that my present life, which is not all right, it will be torn, and I'm going to have the best for the, from the kingdom and the king of kings in Jesus' name. It will be so in Jesus' name. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. There is faith, there's patience, there's obedience to the word of God, 
and preventable tragedies are going to be turned around in our lives in Jesus' name. I just want to show you three areas where we need to think about what brings tragedies into the lives of people and how we need to prevent all those tragedies. Number one is a tragedy of impatience. The tragedy of impatience. Number two, the transgression of indifference. What can I do? What is going to happen is going to happen. The transgression of indifference. Let it happen. God has said so. That's a lie. God sent unto Eli and said, This is going to be, this is going to be. I'm going to do something in your family that the ears that hear, they will tinkle because I'm going to really lay this on you. You know what he said? He is God. Let him do what he wants to do. I'm a man. What can I do? Can I fight the purpose of God? The transgression of indifference that will do nothing and say nothing. Not even pray, not even plead, not even repent. What if the king of Nineveh had said, He is God? He says that's what he wants to do. And he has sent his prophet all the way from Israel. And the man passed through the way to even get in here. That's what God says he wants to do. Let him do it. No, he didn't say that. But you know, the people are indifferent. They're just like that. Their hands are down. Their minds are down. They cannot stand upon the promises of God. The things are preventable. We are going to prevent them. I said we are going to prevent them. Number three is the tongue of iniquity. The tongue of iniquity. We can prevent that. You know, the people that say and speak and talk and shout and they say a lot of things and they never tell, they never can tell the tragedies that they are bringing upon themselves by what they say. The tongue of iniquity. And, and you know, sometimes uh, they're talking, uh, why somebody is a stranger, we look nice, we talk nice. Or not say anything bad to a stranger. It's when somebody is very near, very close. Husband talking to the wife, and wife talking to the husband. And Miriam, the senior sister, talking about Moses. And Aaron, the senior brother, talking about Moses. Familiarity makes us to talk. And the tongue of iniquity could bring some tragedies in our lives, which are preventable. Let's go to number one. Number one, preventing the tragedy of impatience. Preventing the tragedy of impatience. For Samuel chapter 13. In First Samuel chapter 13, I'm looking at it from verse 8. And it tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. Can you imagine somebody who had waited for seven days? And just at the end of the seven days, because Samuel had not showed up, he then went to do something he shouldn't have done. And as soon as he finished, just a few minutes after he had, after he had done what he did, then Samuel came. And then we're told in the next verse after Samuel came, that Samuel asked him. Then we're told in verse 10, Behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? Impatience. He could have waited just a few minutes more, even an hour, even two hours, even five hours, even twelve hours. You have waited all these seven days without saying anything negative, doing anything negative, just waiting for the prophet Samuel. And then because he saw the people, you know, did what he did. What have you done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me. 
and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Pharisees gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself therefore. I knew, my conscience was telling me, this is not right. I forced myself therefore. It was the first time I'll do something. I never did something like this in my life. I knew that this is not my place, my position. I didn't have any authority. I didn't have any permission from the Lord to do it. But what could I do? I forced myself and offered a bunch offering. And Samuel said unto Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord has have established your kingdom upon Israel forever. Look at that. Now the Lord will have established your kingdom forever. From you to your children and to their children to their children, the Lord will have established your kingdom forever. What tragedy came upon it, but now thy kingdom shall not continue. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. It was a tragedy that was preventable. Just wait a little. Just be patient. And don't take loss into your hand. Preventable tragedy. We're looking at Hebrews. I told you the story already, but let me read the conclusion to you. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men. There are different kinds of men. There are some men that will try to take your right away from you. Follow peace with all men. There are some men that they just walk through life and push everybody they want to push now so they can get to where they're getting to follow peace with all men. God is your protector. God is your provider. God is your defender. Don't have any issue with anybody. Don't join battle with anybody. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. What's your purpose in life? What's your purpose and your goal for eternity to see the Lord? Well, to see the Lord is more important than getting money. To see the Lord is more important than being popular. To see the Lord is more important than any other thing we're seeking for on earth. And if that is your priority, you let other things go so you can be at peace with men and follow holiness so that you see the Lord. Then he tells us what we are to remember. And he tells us about a man of impatience. That because he was impatient, each patient, he lost everything, a tragedy of impatience. In verse 15, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. Any root of bitterness. You know, when we're bitter, we think we're going to hurt the people we're bitter about. But no, it hurts us. Any root of bitterness in us. You know, we came to the church, and when you came to the church, all you wanted to do was just get saved and say this word. I never had anything like this before. You cherished the word. You appreciated the word. You received the word. The first thing we called you to do, they said, me, can I do that? Me, am I qualified to do that? I didn't come to do anything. I didn't come to do anything. All I came to do, just this word of God, bread of life, give it unto me. That's what, that's what you are, your attitude. But now, after some years, we forgot ourselves. A little happening here, we become bitter. A little interaction here will become bitter. A little denial will become bitter. And then that bitterness makes a, a root to spring up within us. And then it says it troubles you, and thereby many be defiled. We shall save people, we shall help people, cleanse people, we defile them by our attitude because we are bitter. And then it says, lest there be any fornicator. A profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. 
the tragedy of impatience is verse 17 for ye know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing he would have inherited the blessing that's what the word of god says he would have but we lost it it was a tragedy that was preventable then he said when he would have inherited the blessing he was rejected for he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears the crying could not do it he should have prevented that at the right time the lord is telling us we should be very careful take it because of impatience in proverbs chapter 28 proverbs chapter 28 we're looking at verse 22 proverbs chapter 28 verse 22 he that hastes to be rich in patience he that hastes to be rich has an evil eye and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him preventable poverty we could have prevented that preventable tragedy you could have prevented that but because of the haste because of the hurry because of the impatience to get this and get that then people ruin their lives looking at first timothy chapter 6 first timothy chapter 6 reading from verse 9 first timothy chapter 6 verse 9 but they that will be rich that is they who say by force by crook by lying, by craft, by deception, come with me, I must get it. And it becomes so impatient, push everybody ahead of them down, and push everybody around them down, destroy themselves and their families, forget their children, forget everyone. And they're seeking to have this or that. It says, they that will be rich fall into temptation and snare and into many foolish and hurtful lost into many foolish actions many losts and it says many snares hurtful laws which draw many destruction and perdition for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith a faith that saves and the faith that prepares us for heaven and the faith that makes us ready for the coming of the lord the air they go astray from the faith and then it says and they pierce themselves through with many souls the tragedy of impatience in a hurry to be rich and the lord is saying the divine antidote and the divine solution is that we become patient patient Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. For ye have need of patience. I've repented. I've done what I need to do. I've sought the face of the Lord. I've returned to the Lord. I've told the Lord, I'm sorry for whatever it is in the past. I'm not ready to walk in the way of righteousness. After that, ye have need of of patience you know there are people they say now i've done the right thing and everything is okay and i've cleansed my way i've repented i've made a situation and i believe i'm okay with god now give me this now give me this now after all what you are talking about that that was not right everything is right now what's the matter with you you have need of patience they're going to get into another problem they're going to get into another kind of evil strategy for evil you're going to get into another uh, you know kind of uh, thing that is not according to the will of god it says and ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of god ye might receive the promise no hurry no impatience no pushing everybody down no uh, no kind of creation of another evil again and i think that is not right 
I've realized my way, I've realized this, and then we put some things together again. You have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, will inherit the blessing. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Here yeah, the word of God is reminding us where for sin we also have, we also are compassed about, we so great, a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us, and let us run with patience. After you have laid aside the sin, laid aside the evil, you have repented, and your natural tendency, everything, something happens you don't like. There's a natural tendency, the sin that does so easily beset us, but you have laid that aside now, all right, that's good. But remember, the tragedy of impatience. Let us now run with patience the race that is set before us. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. We're looking at verses 3 and 4. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith walketh patience. You know, sometimes you believe the Lord. I'm asking for this. I'm asking for that. I'm demanding this, I'm decreeing this, and it's a little delay. Don't take loss into your hand just because of that little delay. It says, Let patience have a perfect work. Look at verse 4. But let patience have a perfect work that she may be perfect and entire, lacking nothing, wanting nothing. Chapter 5 of James. James chapter 5, reading from verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Many things happen. Temptations are there. Trials are there. Persecution is there. There are things you find inconvenient. And when you find those things inconvenient in your life, uncomfortable for you, and the Lord is saying, stay there, stand there, don't argue, don't fight. Don't say, well, because I put this in place, I put that in place, I put that in place, then I ought to have this now. Be patient, therefore. You know, sometimes it's a prophecy that the Lord has given you, the dream, the vision the Lord has given you. I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. That reminds us of the mother of Jacob, Jacob and Esau, Esau and Jacob. When she was pregnant, the Lord had told her that the younger will rule over the older, and the older will serve the younger. And now I see calls Esau. And he said, go and make me the kind of food I like, venison, and then come and give it to me. And then she had that, and she called Jacob and said, very quickly, hear my word. Go and do the kind of food, venison, that your father loves, and give it to him so that he can bless you. And Jacob said, what if my father detects that I came to deceive him. Uh -uh. I have the word from the Lord. And because this is what you have to do, listen to me. What a tragedy he brought upon herself. She brought upon herself. 